Hi, thanks for joining me. I'm Lee Manovich, and today I'm going to show you about a, a problem that I've actually experienced twice in two days with customer files. Um, you know, I figure at that point I should probably throw this into a video so that people understand what uh, what needs to be done. This is going to be specifically about gradients, and if I am any good with my YouTubery, then right about here should be a uh, a link to a video now, which is my previous spot color gradient video. Uh, but let's get right to this and I'll show you what's going on. So on screen right now, I have what looks like a very simple gradient and it is pretty simple gradient, but there's a couple of issues with it and I'm going to point out those issues to you. This is a gradient from a, a it's a spot color. The spot color here in, in question is spot one, which uh, if you've watched any of my whiting videos, you know, means that it's going to print as white. Uh, and it looks like a pretty straightforward uh, gradient, but watch what happens. I'm actually going to copy this and I'm going to go to the left with this just so you can see what's going on. So I'm making a copy. Um, once it's off of my white artboard, I can see a couple of things that are happening. I'm hoping one of these will, will translate properly on screen. Um, but the first thing is it's not, it's not going from... Uh, my my purplish color here which we call spot one to white it's actually going to clear and that tells me that i have transparency effects applied and if i cheat a little bit and come over to my gradient before it's time i can see that i've got a checkerboard there which tells me that it is um, by the way if you've never done this before um, if you go over here show transparency grid uh, if I do transparency grid, I wouldn't have even had to to uh, move that gradient for you to see what's going on. That checkerboard just gives you a, a really good view of what's happening with transparency. I don't use it much because I find it just dizzying to work with. Um, but that's one of them. And then the other is this hard line here, which we'll definitely talk about. So let's uh, let's get to fixing this. And the first thing that I'm going to do is... Down here, this looks like, you know, it's a gradient from white to solid spot one, and then it just continues solid, solid spot one. But if I look at my gradient slider, I don't have an endpoint on here. And that actually can be a problem. Um, you know, call it superstition, but I've had issues in the past with specific rips not imaging this properly sometimes, and it, it seems to be hit or miss. So the first thing I'm going to do just to get it off the table is if I click here, I see it's 100% opacity, which in this case, the way this gradient was made means that the, uh, the end user really did want this to be solid white. Um, uh, I'm just going to click anywhere to the right of that to create a new endpoint. And then I'm going to drag it all the way to the end. You can see now it says 100%. And I, I've closed that loop there. I no longer have an open segment. Okay. Um, so I, it's just one of those things that I, I always like to be sure of is that I have an, an, uh, a, close, uh, a closing point to my gradient. Now, if I come to the other side, this is good. It's set at 0%, but my opacity here is set to 2%. And if we've looked, ah, I've been working on the wrong one. Let me redo this again. All right. Um, okay, my opacity is set to 2%. I had the, my sample selected instead of the actual uh, live file that I want to work on. Um, opacity means that I'm going to be working with transparency effects. And we know that transparency effects with spot colors do not work or do not always work. Um, and in this case, and in the other case that I got, I mean, two days, two, two consecutive problems, it, it definitely did not work. Um, we want to fix that. So let's go ahead and fix that. We know that the opacity is set to 2%. So if I want to do this properly and keep it at 2%, what I'm going to do is hold down the shift key and then double click on this mark, which brings up my color dialog. This is my alternate color dialog. I'm going to click on swatches. I'm going to choose spot one because it was set to white and I'm going to change my opacity to 100%. So what was in here was a gradient from spot one to white with transparency set up. That's, that's definitely, that's, uh, that's bad news times too. Now, 
what I have right now is just solid spot one, which we don't want. So now that I have spot one selected with the proper opacity of 100%, now I can go to my tint dialog and I can go ahead and change that to 2%. Okay, and there's my 2%. Now, at that point, I am ready to save this file as PDF or whatever and go ahead and image this. But if you look here, you see that I have kind of a hard line. The reason I have a hard line is because if I click on this gradient with my gradient, oops, my gradient tool, you can see that my gradient does not even go all the way to the top or bottom of this. Now, this is going to actually move where the gradient goes, okay? So there would be, you know, maybe some adjustment that needs to be made here if I want to keep all of these, these uh, levels at exactly the right position, top to bottom. I would have to proportionally expand this. Um, but let's, let's first assume that they really did want this to go to 2%. They never want it to go clear. So first thing I want to do is move this up to the top. Okay, now, oops. Now, how do I do this? Honestly, the easiest way to do this is with this tool again. I can just click it elsewhere and I can click here. I'm holding down shift to constrain it and I've got a weird little uh, screen thing happening here, but I'm holding down shift to make sure that it's perfectly vertical and then I'm letting go at the very bottom and you can see that this lines up with the bottom and over here it lines up with the top. The, the top on this one is, it's, it's kind of weird the way gradients work. It's not this, it's actually this uh, larger larger spot that, that determines where that end is. Okay, now that's how I would do it if they really wanted it to be 2%. Um, the other way I could, if, if this were set up shallower, um, is I doubt very much that they actually wanted to keep a 2% dot in there. I would actually go in and make that gradient 0%, but I'm not going to second guess what the customer was actually looking for. So we'll keep it at 2% for that and keep it right where it is. So now you can see, you know, if I move this over, uh, you can see that even, even on the gray area, it is the way it's supposed to, to look. You know, if I take this and put it on top, you can see they kind of blend together because of transparency effects. If I go this way, it's very clear that this is a solid uh, with the appropriate with the appropriate uh, color specs in there. So there you go. Those are the those are my my two fine points here. Make sure that your gradients have endpoints, and do not use transparency effects on spot colors. You want to use tint instead. Uh, and in some previous videos, I've I've talked about the use of overprinting if I want to actually make them. Um, you know, not knock out what's underneath, but be able to print on top of that. You can, you can reference those videos as well. So thank you so much for joining me today and hope to get, see you again soon.